before him. You're standing right now in the throne room of God. Praise God. And you're saying, Lord, here I am now. Lord, hear me. Pray with me now. Father in heaven, we have come one more time. But we know, Lord, that it's not by our strength that we are standing. It's not by our good fortune that we are standing. Not by our wisdom that we have made it. But it's because of your hand which has rested upon us. Night and day. Day and night. You have been with us, O oh God. Today, Father, as we come, we... We want to give you the best that we have to give. So, Lord, if there's anything right now that is hindering us, anything in our spirit, Lord, that is preventing us, Lord, from stepping into your throne room, oh, God, help us to lay it aside right now. Every weight, every sin, oh, God, help us to lay it down, Lord. Forgive us, Lord, of our trespasses against you. We ask you, Lord God, to clean us from head to toe. So that we can come before you with a pure heart. For we want to see you this morning. From 2 Kings chapter 7. Beginning in verse 3. We'll read through verse 11. I will be sharing with you from the King James Version. You can follow along in whatever translation you have. Verse 3 says. And there were four leprous men at the entrance of the gate. And they said one to another. Why sit we here until we die? Right. If we say we will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit still here, we die also. All right. Now, therefore, come. Let us fall unto the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. If they kill us, we shall die. And they rose up in the twilight to go into the camp of the Syrians. And when they were come to the edge of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there. For the Lord had made the host of the Syrians hear a noise of chariots and a noise of horses, even the noise of a great host. And they said one to another, Lo, the king of Israel hath hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us. Wherefore they arose and fled in the twilight, left their tents and their horses and their asses, even the camp as it was, and fled for their lives. And when these lepers came to the edge of the camp, they went into one tent and did eat and drink and carry from there silver and gold and raiment and went and hid it and came again and entered into another tent and carried from there also and went and hid it. And then they said one to another, We do not well. This day is a day of good tidings. Hallelujah. And we hold our peace. If we tarry until the morning light, some mischief will come upon us. Now therefore come, that we may go and tell the king's household. And so they came, called unto the porter of the city, and they told them, saying, We came to the camp of the Syrians, and behold, there was no man there, neither voice of men, but horses tied, and asses tied, and pits as they were. And he called the porters, and they told it to the king's house within. This morning, let me spend a few moments on this as our theme, as our topic, as our thinking point. This is what we want you to think about. You have nothing to lose by believing. Yeah. Let me say that again. You have nothing to lose by believing. Amen. This morning, as we look at this story as it unfolds, 
The centerpiece of this portion of the story deals with four men who were stricken by what at that time was a debilitating, highly contagious disease, leprosy. Leprosy in its time was highly contagious and in fact it was debilitating and disfiguring. As I go through and describe to you this story, understand first of all that these were men who were outcasts. Among the laws that were, dis that were uh, uh, promulgated, that were communicated in the book of Leviticus, the law said that when a leper was in town, that leper had the responsibility whenever people were approaching to self-identify themselves by crying aloud, leper, leper, so that those who might be approaching them would know to stay away from them. According to the law, a leper, because of the contagious disease, the debilitating disease, was banished from civilization. They were not permitted to congregate in civil society. They were the outcasts. They were literally the bottom of the bottom. These four lepers were outside of the city because the law dictated that they had no contact with any person who was whole. So it is, as we examine this message today, I want to help you to recognize that these men had virtually no hope of survival. They were at the bottom. They had no expectation of any good to come out of their lives. And yet, as the story unfolds, these lepers were demonstrated to be those very ones who God's providence brought to a place of prosperity. God's providence led them to a place of plenty. Let me suggest to you as we begin to unpack this message that when you have come to a place in your life when everything seems to have gone wrong, when things seem to be at their last end, when you have no expectation of things getting better, let me suggest to you that no matter what your condition today may be, you have nothing to lose by believing. Yeah. After all, life is not always fair. Life does not always play by the right rules. When you have done as much as you know to do, sometimes you still come up on the short end. Oh, yeah. When you have tried as hard as you can try yeah. to be the best person that you can be, mm -hmm. there are going to be some times when things don't come out the way you hoped. I'm here to declare for every person who is with us this morning, yeah. you have nothing to lose by believing. Not only am I talking about the nature of life, but I'm also talking about your soul and salvation. I'm here to declare to you, no matter what you've done, no matter how you sin, no matter how many times you stumble, no matter how many mistakes you've made, no matter how many regrets you have, no matter how much guilt consumes you, you have nothing to lose this morning by believing that Jesus died for your sins. 
that Jesus paid the penalty for your sins. You have nothing to lose by believing that if you turn your life over to Christ, He will wash you whiter than snow. He will make you a new creation. The Bible declares if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. You have nothing to lose, my friends, by believing. Let me now take a moment and give you this parenthetical reference. Sometimes when we are watching the news and they are about to give a very vivid picture on the screen, picture of a violent act, picture of an act that is hurtful, they will give a disclaimer that goes something like this. I need to warn you, some of the images that you are about to see may be disturbing to some people. I am standing here today to say some of the images I will describe to you may be disturbing to some people. But you need the whole picture in order to understand what God can do. This story begins not here in the seventh chapter, but if you take time later to read chapter number six of 2 Kings, there in chapter number six of 2 Kings, Elisha, the prophet, is confronting Syria, an adversary of Israel. Syria was seeking to do harm to the people of God. Syria, like Satan, wanted to kill, steal, and destroy the favor of God. But God revealed their secret plan to abuse the king. And not once, but twice, God gave a revelation to Elijah, letting him know the secret things the Syrians had planned. Let me begin by saying, Satan cannot sneak up on you when you are in the master's hands. The Holy Spirit in you will give you discernment. The Holy Spirit in you will guide you to the path that God has for you. The Syrian king, on two different occasions, attempted to ambush the king of Israel. But God spoke to the prophet Elijah, and Elijah gave notice to the king. And the king, in his wisdom, did not go to the place where the ambush was waiting. I pray this morning, when you hear from God, that you will not only hear from God, but heed his word. I pray that when God says, this is not the place for you, that you will avail yourself of what the Spirit is saying to you. Syrian king was determined to go after Elisha because God was using him. The Syrian king surrounded Elisha and his servant. They placed all around Elisha an army getting ready to take Elisha and put him to death. Early in the morning, servant of Elijah rose. He looked out and saw the enemy around him. He woke up the prophet and said, Oh man of God, there is danger around us. But Elisha spoke in that sixth chapter and said, Fear not, for they who are with us are more than they who are with them. I pray, my friends, 
that when you get ready to stand for God, remind yourself you are not standing alone. Sometimes it feels like you're all by yourself. Yes. Sometimes it feels like yes. you don't have what it takes. Elijah told the servant, it is not what it looks like. Tell yourself this morning, it's not what it looks like. He told that servant, I'm going to pray so that God will open your eyes. So that you can begin to see that you are not in this all by yourself. Elijah prayed and the Bible says the servant was able to look to the hills. Hallelujah. From which cometh our help. Our help comes from the Lord. And as he looked to the hills, uh, to his right and to his left, uh, he looked up and he looked behind. And all around him were chariots of fire, angels waiting on the word of God yeah. to be dispatched to do battle against the enemy of God's man. My friends, I hope you understand that what God did for Elijah he will do for you. There is a battle for your soul right now. Satan is rising up to the east and to the west, to the north and to the south. To make us believe that we have no power to destroy what he is doing. But I'm here to remind you that when God told Elijah... To look to those hills. Uh, he saw what you ought to see. Uh, every day that you and I get up. Uh, recognize that your house. Uh, just like my house. Uh, is surrounded by chariots of fire. Uh, God will not allow the adversary to come into your house. Uh, he will not allow the adversary to overtake you. Uh, if you just look up. Uh, and see the hand of God. Yeah. Elijah prayed, hallelujah. He said, God, I want you to help my servant to yeah. see what I see. Yeah. If this church, hallelujah, would just pray and ask God to open its eyes. If the church of God, everywhere around this world, would pray and say, God, Help me to see I'm not out here by myself I'm not here without power If you would just pray right now Hallelujah that God would help you to see What he's already set up around you You would fight with more conviction You would stand with more authority You would resist with more commitment says that Elijah went forward and prayed another prayer just as he had asked that his servant be able to see yeah. Elijah then prayed that his enemy would be made blind praise God I need you to help me this morning when I look and realize that God will not only give a revelation to those who seek him but he will blind your adversary so that they can't hallelujah do you no harm the Bible says that the adversary was blind. Uh, Elijah then took them by the hand, uh, brought them into the city, uh, eventually sent them back home. Uh, they did no harm to the people of God, all oh, because Elijah prayed, uh, hallelujah, that men would come to know the power of God. Uh, but let me tell you, my friends, uh, this is not the end of the story. Uh, the Syrian king uh, hallelujah by the name of Benedad uh, he became incensed uh, he could not stand to see uh, what God was doing in his people uh, so I'm here to tell you his enemy uh, hallelujah the Syrian
Philistine king uh, by the name of Benedad uh, said, I'll show you uh, what I can do. Uh, he took his mighty army. Uh, he decided to surround the whole city of Israel. Uh, Jerusalem, Samaria was surrounded, my brothers and sisters. Uh, nobody came out. Uh, nobody went in. Uh, a blockade was in place. Uh, nobody came out. Uh, nobody came in. Uh, the Benedict king of Syria, uh, he said to himself, uh, I got them now. Uh, your God can't help you. Uh, now that you're surrounded, uh, on the left there's trouble. Uh, on the right there's trouble. Uh, in front of you there's trouble. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, behind me there's trouble. Uh, the Syrian king said, uh, I got you where I want you. Uh, a blockade is in place. Uh, let me tell you, my friends, uh, some of this may be hard for your ears, uh, but the Bible said uh, there was a famine in the land. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, no food. Uh, no job. Uh, no help. Uh, no careers. Uh, no entertainment. Uh, no sports. Uh, no restaurants. Uh, couldn't go out. Uh, couldn't go in. Trouble was in the land. A blockade around the city. Do you know what it's like to shelter in place? Do you know what it's like to be locked up in your house? Do you know what it's like all dressed up, nowhere to go? Money in your pocket, can't spend it. No joy, no peace, nothing to look forward to.
pieces of silver to eat the dung from doves. Can I get a witness? I'm here to tell you when it gets that bad. When you at the end, you'll pay what it takes. You'll do what you have to do. Can I get a witness in the house of God? But I'm here to Because 
of the trouble in his city. How many times have you looked good on the outside? But just beneath the surface, where nobody could see, he was suffering in pain, dealing with your trouble. The king of Israel said, I've had as much as I can. Let me go to God's man, Elisha. Find out what's going to happen. Yeah. Elijah told the king, in 24 hours, in 24 hours, God's going to turn this situation around. I'm here to tell somebody, it may look bad, but God can open a door when it's been closed for a long time. Here we are in this text. Four lepers on the outside looking in with no hope of survival. They come to a place where they say, we're desperate now. We can't go into the city because if we do, we're going to die there. What we are going to do is to make a pact that we have nothing to lose by believing. And so they told themselves, we're going to head down the road to the Syrian camp. If we go and perish, so be it. They decided that they couldn't go down anymore. When you have nowhere to go but up, it's time to start climbing. They didn't know that the prophet Elijah had just spoken. They didn't know that the prophecy was in 24 hours, food would be available. All they knew is that they had no place to go but up. All they knew is they had nothing to lose by believing. This is how God works. We don't ever know what he has set in motion. Yeah. All we can do is believe. Yeah. When you get to a point of desperation, uh -huh. do you sometimes feel pressed to the point where you don't know what to do? Uh -huh. Finances are all played out. Emotions are at an end. Well, these four lepers couldn't go back and were afraid to go forward, but they made up in their mind, I don't have nothing to lose when I stand and go anyhow. Provision of God comes when we stand and walk in faith. As they walked, deliverance was unfolding. The Bible says that as they began to walk to the Syrian camp, before they even got there, God had already set in motion the very deliverance that they needed. The Syrian army did not hear four broken lepers walking alone. What the Syrian army heard was a nation of Hittites, a nation of Egyptians, and dare I say chariots of fire. Perhaps the same chariots Elijah saw up on the mountain. These were the chariots that made, hallelujah, the Syrians believe there was more coming at them than four homeless, helpless lepers. When they got there, God had already moved so that the Syrian army had deserted their camp. I'm here to give you a word today. Well, if you begin to walk in faith, yeah. if you trust God anyhow, yeah. if you keep on believing as you get to where God is sending you, God 
will move your adversaries out of your way. God will open doors for you. God will make your pathway straight. When they got to the Syrian camp, all they had to do was to go from tent to tent to eat as much as they want. They got not only food, but they got silver, they got gold. And when they came to themselves, they said, we can't just simply take all of this for ourselves. We got to be a blessing to others also. So let me tell you on this morning, yes. as we wrap this message into a box, when God delivers you, don't keep it to yourself. Go tell somebody well. that God, he healed me. Go tell somebody, God, he saved me. Go tell somebody, God gave me peace. Go tell somebody, God opened doors that nobody could open. That's why Jesus said, go ye therefore unto all the world and preach this gospel. Tell the world the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ our Lord. Let me say to you, my friends, you have nothing to lose by believing. Yeah. Will you believe God this morning? Yeah. Will you trust Him with all of your heart? Will you give Him your life today? If you are here this morning and you have received the word from God, if you feel like you are at wit's end, you are hemmed in, boxed in, trouble is everywhere, confusion, I want to invite you today to accept Jesus Christ. For he says, I am the way. Yeah. You want to know the way? He says, I am the way. Yeah. The truth and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Yeah. I'm going to pray a prayer with you this morning. And if you are here today and God is speaking to your heart and you desire to receive the hope of salvation in Christ, you need to just say yes to him. Yeah. All have said, the Bible says, all have said, come short of the glory of God. But Jesus paid it all. His sacrifice was so that we could have our sins forgiven. Yeah. I want you to pray with me now. Father, we need you today in our walk with you. We need you, God, to guide us and keep us, even though we're in situations that seem so overwhelming at times. Lord, our lives are not all perfect. They aren't all they should be. Lord, sometimes, Lord, we find ourselves in despicable situations. But just as those lepers, God, came to realize we have nothing to lose by believing, so too do we. If someone today, Lord, is seeking you, Lord, let them experience you right now. Yes, God. If they are saved, help them to make the commitment that I'm going to go where God leads me. I have nothing to lose. If they're unsaved, God, Help them to say, Lord, I am a sinner. I believe that you died for my sins on the cross. That you rose on the third day with all power in your hands. And I invite you into my heart. Help them, Lord, to make that confession today. That they will be saved. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. God bless you, my friends. If you prayed that prayer, you were saved right now. And I invite you to commit yourself to a local congregation where you can begin to learn and grow spiritually. And we welcome and encourage you to send an email to the church so that we can pray with you and help you in your walk. Send it to seed of faith, seed of faith at comcast.net. And we will respond to you, pray with you provide you with some information on your walk with the Lord. And if you are looking for a church to connect with, if you are a Christian and you want to be a part of a Bible-believing church, we would welcome you to be a part of this ministry, no matter where you're located. Under the circumstances, people can connect with churches all across the country just through these social media. If you desire to be a part of this ministry, 
Just send us an email. See the faith at Comcast.